the DC-8, we're preparing for Operation Ice Bridge this year. It's our third year in uh, supporting this campaign. Uh, these are ice studies uh, down the Antarctic. We fly regularly about 11-hour missions. And uh, for the last three weeks, we've been preparing the aircraft for this effort. Uh, so we're excited to get it going, and we'll be leaving this Sunday on, on this trip. Uh, typically, um, a few weeks before the deployment, we start installing all the uh, uh, science instruments onto the aircraft here at Dryden. And then we need to test fly the aircraft before we uh, deploy it. And we have uh, done this this week, so we fly typically over known targets in the Mojave Desert here and over the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean. And uh, when we are comfortable that uh, everything works as we expect, uh, we are ready for deployment. And then we will leave on, on Sunday for Punta Arenas in Chile. And of course, there aren't uh, any airfields down on the Antarctic continent that we could easily operate out of. So we're operating out of southern Chile. Uh, we're as about as far south in uh, South America as you can get. That gets us as close as you possibly can to Antarctic. Uh, the DC-8 is well suited for this kind of work because of the long legs it can fly. Operation Icebridge is the largest airborne campaign that has ever been flown uh, of the polar ice sheet so far. And uh, I'm really excited to be part of it because we, we fly six different airplanes this year, three of them in the, over the Arctic and three planes on the uh, Antarctic. And the uh, DC-8 is the, uh, the main workhorse for us to, uh, to cover a lot of ground over the Antarctic Peninsula and, and the many glaciers that flow in the, uh, into the Southern Ocean. We are going back every year over the same glacier in Antarctica and measure with uh, extreme precision how the uh, surface elevation has changed from year to year. And that tells us how much ice Antarctica is losing. Ice caps essentially are small versions of the ice sheets. Uh, typically they're less than 500,000 square kilometers, uh, though in reality uh, most, most of them are much smaller than that, on the order of several thousand kilometers squared. And they, like the ice sheets themselves, are the result of accumulations of snow that have been compacted over many thousands of years. And they, in some cases, are the remnants of a larger ice sheet, such as the Laurentide ice sheet, which covered uh, all of North America. And in other cases, they simply uh, have grown in the locations that they are uh, in response to the snowfall that's occurred there. In particular, in the Canadian Arctic, the Arctic has seen the, the largest, most direct impact of, of climate change. And the ice caps themselves, since they're much, much smaller masses than the larger ice sheets, they respond much more quickly uh, to temperature changes. NASA has been monitoring these for almost 16 years. We began with uh, flights with some of our aircraft in 1995 using just a laser uh, altimeter. And Operation Ice Bridge is adding to that data set, extending it, along with the ISAT data that had been collected before. And so it's our hope that we, by combining these data sets, uh, we'll have a long-term time series about what's happening there so that we can better understand the dynamics of the ice caps as well as uh, use them as early warning indicators of what is happening in our climate. I would characterize it as this is the place where we have the most important feedback mechanism into the climate itself. The ice in the Arctic is one of the principal reflectors of energy coming from the sun. And the disappearance of that ice means that not only does the temperature of the Earth change, but it also means that circulation patterns in the ocean and in the atmosphere change in response to that. So it's really critical to monitor how quickly the ice is disappearing.